Okay, here's our second example. Um, it's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity. x minus 3 to the n over n 4 to the n. So let's see what happens here. Um, I said in the last video that power series start at 0, but here we have one starting at 1. And we need to do that here because we're dividing by n. And so we don't want to start at 0, um, or else we'd be undefined. So we'll start at the very next one, n equals 1. OK, um, well, let's see how this is going to work. A lot more going on here, x minus 3 to the n over n 4 to the n. Um, maybe first, just to, you know, if we were in class, I would ask this question, where is this power series centered? And I say, well, we should look here, x minus 3. This power series is centered at 3. And that's that's absolutely right. OK. Um, but that's not, that's going to maybe be helpful a little bit later. But let's see how this develops. So the first thing, we're looking for the radius of convergence. OK. Um, as you look at that, now think back to all the tests that we know. Um, and how are we going to figure this out? Last time we used geometric series. That helped us figure out our radius. Um, but that's not going to be useful here because uh, we've got this other n involved. So we can't use the geo series and identify an r. Uh, instead, I'm just going to tell you guys, we're going to use the ratio test. So it turns out the ratio test is going to be our best friend <laughs> when it comes to power series. Sometimes we use geometric series for that radius, but nine times out of 10, if not more, we're going to use the ratio test. Um, it could happen where you use a root test or something like that too, but we really see ratio test a lot. All right, so let's check this out. Um, how's ratio test going to work? Let me cover this part of it up just for the moment. Uh, so ratio test, if you recall, uh, you take the n plus 1th term and you divide it by the nth term, right? A, a n plus 1 over a n, right? You take that limit as n goes to infinity. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Of course, we have a fraction. So here's the n plus 1th term replacing the n's with n plus 1. And when we divide it by a n, well, we're going to do the reciprocal and multiply, just like we would in a ratio test. And it turns out the results of the ratio test are going to lead us straight to uh, the radius of convergence. So let's see it. Let's see these things simplify. OK, so I've got uh, x minus 3 to the n plus 1 over x minus 3 to the n. All that's going to cancel except for one of the x minus 3s to the first here, right? And 4 to the n plus 1, 4 to the n. Well, that's going to cancel with 4 to the n here, leaving us with just 4 to the first. The n and the n plus 1 we can't do anything with. So here's what we have. We have 1 uh, x minus 3 to the first will not cancel. Uh, and then that n will not cancel. On the bottom, the n plus 1, and then the 4 to the first, everything else cancels out. I notice I'm starting to get some shadows here, so I really apologize for the, um, the fuzziness on the camera. But I think you guys can, can understand what I'm, I'm presenting here, especially when I read it to you. Okay, of course, that's all in absolute values and the limit into infinity. Well, let's see. To take this limit into infinity, so we'd have infinity over infinity. Well, infinity over infinity, we are going to need L'Hopital. So let's apply a L'Hopital there. It's actually a fairly simple one. Uh, derivative of n is just going to leave us with x minus 3. Derivative of n plus 1 going to just leave us with 4, our constants. Um, so we're taking this limit. Now, notice our limit is n to infinity. Well, there's no more n's. So we'd really just treat this whole thing like a constant. We're going to have the absolute value 
of x minus 3 over 4. Okay. Leave that absolute value. So what do we do with that? Well, the ratio test says the answer to the limit needs to be less than 1 to converge, which is actually very similar to the Geo series result, right? R had to be less than 1. So the answer to our limit has to be less than 1. So we say, OK, here's what we'll do. I'll just multiply that 4 over. And I can now see that's where I'm centered. So that must be my radius. The radius is 4. Okay, let me erase this, this point. Well, once we have the radius of convergence, we want the interval. So right now I can tell, you know, I'm centered at three. And if I move four in each direction, I'm going to be at seven and at negative one. I know I at least converge in the middle, but what about those endpoints at negative 1 and 7? So I also showed the negative 1 and the 7 uh, algebraically. So if we set this up, then we know x minus 3 is between negative 4 and 4. And so if we add 3, negative 1 less than x less than 7, okay, well. We can tell that we're moving four in each direction off of where we're centered. But what about those endpoints? Well, let's try. Uh, I started, I decided to just go um, numerical order here. So I started with x equals negative one. Again, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to plug it into the original power series for x. And uh, well, I'm showing you a few steps here, but, but here we go. So plugging negative one in for x into the original power series, and sorry, that's n equals 1 to infinity, right? Well, that's going to simplify to negative 4, okay? And it, we're not surprised that we're going to get this cancellation. Okay, so we can separate negative 1 to the n and 4 to the n. The 4 to the n's will cancel, and we will end up with this. Uh, from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over n. And we're just going to think, okay, out of all the tests, the series tests that we know, is this going to converge or diverge at this specific x value? Well, which series test seems to apply here? I'd say, well, I think that's an alternating series. So let's try that. Our non-alternating part is 1 over n. So, oh, I think I continue on the next page. I was waiting for it. OK, remember this. Condition number one of the alternating series test is to take the limit as n goes to infinity. And for our uh, nth non-alternating part of our nth term, 1 over n, yes, we do get 0. Check. The second part of the alternating series test is that the nth term is greater than or equal to the n plus 1th term. Well, that's fairly simple here. The nth term, 1 over n. The next one is 1 over n plus 1. We just have to show that this is true. Um, so, well, we've done this several times now. We can cross multiply. And we can subtract n. And that is painfully obvious. 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Yes, that's true. Check. Both conditions worked out for our alternating series test. So we know that at x equals negative 1, our series converges. It does converge at that endpoint. That's pretty exciting. OK, let's try the other endpoint at x equals 7. Plugging 7 in and showing you my first uh, several steps, plugging 7 in to that original power series. That simplifies to 4 to the n. Well, what do you know? Those cancel out. No, we're not surprised. And we end up with just 1 over n, very similar 
to the last endpoint, but now it's not alternating. Hey, 1 over n, what's going on with that? Well, if you thought of the p-series, that's p equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1. <laughs> so that diverges by p-series, or you might just say it diverges by the harmonic series, right? That is the harmonic series. Either way. Um, so it diverges at this endpoint, so our interval of convergence is... From negative 1 to 7, I think I wrote it in interval notation on the last one, negative 1 to 7, like that. You could write it that way, too. I kind of prefer kind of prefer that way. And OK, hey, that is 11.8, uh, finding radius and interval of convergence of power series. So go check out the homework, and uh, I'll see you in the Zoom session.